I've already planned out um, fully that I don't intend to sleep. Friday. You know, like when head coaches script their first five plays, I've yeah. scripted my first five drinks for Saturday morning. It's going to start with a nice White Claw on the walk there, the pack of White Claw waiting in line, vodka Red Bull, the first drink in there, and then vodka sodas the rest of the day, maybe a vodka so- vodka Red Bull at halftime. I'm, I'm easily prepared to drop a significant amount of money paying for drinks at the bar. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. But it ain't about how hard you hit. And I'd hit out the park, no question, with all due respect. It's about how hard you can get hit. And you might need, at some point in your life, a little massage on your ass. They keep moving forward. How much you can take, they keep moving forward. Forward. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Moving Forward Podcast Rivalry Week. Um, just a shout out to all the Michigan football players that ignored my DMs. You're cowards <laughs> for not coming on this show. Um, we had an interview with Blake on Tuesday, I believe, is when I put out that, and it was really good. Got a lot of positive feedback from that. Had an awesome conversation with Blake. Longtime friend, so obviously we've known each other for a long time. So it's been – it was awesome to have him on the show, hoping to have more MSU guys in the future. Um can get a lot of offensive alignment as guests, but uh, those skill positions might be a bit harder. But anyway, let's move on. Um, we're going to do a lot of football this episode, so I thought let's start with some NBA. We're one week into the NBA season as of Tuesday, and there's a lot of stuff that's happened so hard, so far. Nate, we're going to do a little different love-hate today. We're going to do an NBA love-hate. What is one thing that you've loved so far this NBA season? Okay, just to add on top of that, that Blake Buter interview was incredible. That was really well done. That was a journalistic masterpiece. That was a blast to listen to. But moving forward, I'll stop uh, fluffing your feathers. My love so far this NBA season of this week, I suppose you could say too, is um, this Hornets team. They are an absolute riot to watch. Um, LaMelo is always going to be a fun player to watch. I've always been a huge fan of the ball family. Um, And they just have a lot of dudes that are really enjoyable to watch. Um, And then to top it all off, Miles has been absolutely incredible. Yeah, he's been um, crazy I'm good. I'm going to be a homer. I'm going to love him because he's an MSU guy. But, like, back-to-back 30 pieces and then a 27-point game. He's averaging 25 points per game four games and into then, the season. And then they're playing a game right now. I believe they just went to half, and he's got 17. So he's been incredible. Um, he operates really well in that offense. He's really figured out the spots to be. Um, you never expect them to just be able to give him the ball at the top of the key and let him – just completely eviscerated defender occasionally can do that type of thing but he plays really well when the defense follows some of the ball action he just finds the right spot so that's been a great thing to watch and the team's just exciting as all hell the announcers obviously help um bring a lot of energy in there but uh yeah it's been it's been great watching that team I really enjoy them I called them as my league pass MVP at the start of the year a week and a half in they have not disappointed yeah, that's a definitely a good call. Um, Miles Bridges has been awesome. I expect his scoring to go down when uh, Tara Rozier comes back into the lineup, but he's been awesome, and he's going to continue to be a starter. I like what they're doing with their small ball lineup. Uh, it's worked really, really well. Um, I'm sure they'll replace Ubre with Terry Rozier when he comes back, and they'll add a nice bench piece off the bench. But, um, yeah, Miles has been awesome. I love watching the Hornets, too. I've been betting on them a lot through the first couple of weeks here. Um which will go right into my love, which is money law money line favorites. I've been parlaying like four money line favorites every night of the NBA and they've hit. I think I'm up like four or five units just because of that. I won a huge money line uh, play yesterday. I got a big one again tonight and I'm sure I'll have one on Friday when there isn't a football game going on. But um, yeah, I love the money line plays. I've been all over the bulls, all over the Hawks, all over the Hornets. The Lakers pulled through yesterday and didn't, suck dick so been big on money line favorites they've been awesome and i just love when you can see a bad team like the magic or the cavaliers match up oh the magic did fuck me against the knicks fuck you knicks for losing to the magic that was tough i I bet on a similar train with those money line parlays um and they really do like they work very well especially in this like um early to mid um regular season period where it's just like who's bringing out the better lineup. Like none of these teams are going to come out crazy, like motivated for a certain thing at this point in time, obviously everybody's going to bring it when they're going to bring it. And some nights they went, but 
all that being said, these games get a little more predictable in this early to mid season. And so you can really find some good value throwing a few of those favorites that are just naturally more talented teams that are going to win those games. So it yeah. might get busted every once in a while, but I think overall, if you're being smart about it, it's a great way to uh, increase the betting account. Well, the NBA isn't like the NFL where it's like one team is like, <laughs> you can have a good day from a bad team. Like the NBA, there are teams openly trying to tank like the magic, like the Pistons, like the Cavaliers, like the thunder, like the Rockets. It's like you catch them on the right night. You're obviously going to get great value. And, Right now, even they can afford to win some games, and even now they're being bad. So even imagine when we come to, like, February, March, April, like, those teams are going to be losing, trying to lose games on purpose. Like, this this play of, like, like a hungry dog runs faster, that does not matter in the end. doesn't NBA. apply. When you play as many apply. games as they do per week, it's not like the NFL where you, get, you prep for an entire week and then you go out and you get your best shot. Like, sometimes these teams, especially on back-to-backs, you just get nights where they don't have it and you don't expect them to have it. And it can be easy to predict and a really good way to make some money. Can I do my hate, which is Nate taking the Lakers tonight against the thunder, because <laughs> that makes zero sense. Just like you just said, the, the Lakers, LeBron's not playing tonight. I don't know if Davis isn't playing either. I saw he's they're playing, but he's yeah. going to play. Oh, last night. I thought his ACL exploded the he way looked, that he, he, he looked like he died. Yeah, and then he just played the rest of the game. He was an absolute monster the whole game, and I was like, why do you got to act like such a little – like, I yeah, was no, – I, I used – I tweeted Russell Westbrook. I What did I say? Russell Westbrook is – Stinky poo? Stinky, stinky butt. Russell stinky Westbrook butt. is stinky yeah, butt. Go. And after that, they went on, like, a huge run and then won me, like, a $100 parlay. So yeah. I motivate Russell Westbrook. He knows when I tweet about him and he does better because I say bad things about him. That's good to know. Okay. Can I at least explain my logic? I went through a whole process with this Lakers pick tonight because they had to travel from San Antonio to OKC. They were not very far and no, not very far, but it's still a uh, back-to-back road trip. Um, anyways, my logic was that the Lakers are such a square pick, right? Lakers over thunder. That's such a square pick. One of the better teams in the league, one of the worst teams in the league, mm-hmm. but Anybody with like half a brain would be like, well, the Lakers make no sense. So that makes the Thunder the square pick. So I reverse reverse squared and then reverse that square a second time. And um, they're actually up 28-13 right now uh, in the first quarter. So it's looking good so far. Never mind about the square pick. That wasn't a bad pick at all. Um, What's your hate? So can I get my actual hate so far into the NBA season? Um, my actual hate is Killian Hayes slander. I will not tolerate it. I am giving him, he needs this whole year. I will give him this whole year. He showed a lot of promise in their last game. He looked really good. He shot, they actually played him over 25 minutes, which they didn't do in the first two games. They played Mm -hmm. him upwards of, I think they played him 32 minutes in their third game, which is all I want to see. He played well. Sadiq plays well. Um, I've, I've, my real hate is, um, not playing Saban Lee, the backup minutes and giving them to Corey Joseph. That's been pissing me off, but, um, yeah, I, I, Killian had a really good game the other day. Um, and I think that he's not as bad as we think he is. And I'm starting to lower expectations from what I originally thought he was going to be. I just want him and Cade to work well with each other. Cause I think they complement each other very nicely with each other. So Yeah which will two great things will happen Saturday. Michigan state will beat Michigan and then we'll see Cade Cunningham play for the Pistons on the first time. Yes, sir. Two good things. I'm 100% behind you with the hate. That's a great hate. People are way too quick to jump off this train. We have barely seen this dude play. He's got all the physical tools you want. I've talked about it before, but the poor guy had to come from overseas to the U S during a pandemic and have very limited time to prep for the season. And then he got hurt. Like nothing that's happened so far. You can blame on him. Um, so I think people are just off the shit uh, way too early with this team. Yeah. Um, so well, they're going to be bad. They're going to be bad, but yeah, I'm fine oh, with it. I'm happy with it, actually. Absolutely. 100%. Um, so I was thinking about doing a hate on Russell Westbrook, and I feel like it's getting – Nate, he was good yesterday. I know. I feel like it's getting very, redundant, very and I don't want to, like, overdo it. Um, so I think I'm, my hate right now is going to be um, – official reviews and some of the officiating I've seen. I've actually got, think it's gotten better. 
So I think the, the – so the reason I bring this up is this Lakers last game with what a mess it was at the end. A double challenge. There was two separate reviews. The last three minutes took like 40 minutes of real time, it felt like. It probably wasn't actually that, but it felt like that. And I feel like we have just set our bar, like our standards so low for what we expect from NBA officiating that when we see moderate, moderate improvement that like we – we take it as like, oh, the official officiating has been good. It's still not good. There's still real flaws. I honestly don't completely think um, like some of these officiating crews 100% know how they want to interpret these new rules, whether they kind of want to like start slowly adjusting like the Trey, the classic Trey Young, James Harden moves, or whether they want to just go in and um, hard implement them. And it's led to some inconsistent calls. Um, I, I know it's low hanging fruit to just hate on officials, especially in the NBA, but like there's still serious work to be done. I'm glad they put in the rule. Um, this year with the three-point jump shots and leaning into other players. But um, I still think there's a lot of room to be done, and it can seriously detract from some – towards the end some of these games. So I, my real hate is Russell Westbrook, but I don't want to go – because we've gone down that path 100 times in this pod already, and the season's barely started. So I won't do that. I will say, though, I've been a little uh, disappointed in some of the officiating. Well, I loved Westbrook yesterday. He won me money, so I'll stand by that. That was one of those – we talked about it before the game even started. Like, LeBron's out. This is one of the Westbrook yeah. games where he just goes off. And he did, and it's going to be awesome in the regular season. Who cares? Blah, 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 blah. We'll get into it in like five months. But the, my, my real thing is I do like one of the other changes the officials made under the under that they're not reviewing out-of-bounds calls anymore with two minutes oh. left to go unless mm-hmm. a team uses their challenge on it. That took up so much gate time in the last couple of years where they review every single time the ball went out-of-bounds on somebody. You can't review it anymore unless – um, you use your challenge on it, which I absolutely love. I think the game of basketball is one of the games where the refs interpreting the play of the game is one of the most important things. I think the official is, is really important to basketball, whether some guys are really charge happy, some guys are block happy, some guys, you know, it's hard to see every single angle. So uh, I, I do like that. It adds a human element to the game of basketball. And I, I really do like it, but these reviews, like I just want the end of games to be shorter. Like there was that college basketball game last year that took like what 40 actual minutes to play two minutes or something like that. Yeah, and, I remember that. um, officiating's been it, it, the rules changes. I like them so far this year, but obviously I think they still have a far way to go. The only thing that I'll hang my hat on um, is that the NBA is really good with changing rules when they know something is broken. All the other professional sports leagues sometimes have a hard time with that, especially baseball, but the NBA is really good about changing a rule. If they think that it's not right, they do it very quickly. Yeah. They usually let it go for a season and they change it. And yeah, that's it's the only thing that I like. And the other thing is like, it's, it's so, it's so hard to be an NBA official. These players moving so fast. There's inches between these calls when you're considering charge and blocks and just moments and seconds of time. So I understand where there can be issues there. I just think that the process for reviewing can still be expedited some and it can take away from some of the other games. But yeah, it, it can definitely improve, but I, I, I do think it's getting better. So that's fair. let's move on, on to our next topic, which will be the NFL will end with Michigan and Michigan state moving on to the NFL. Uh, the Lions keep losing. They could win this week. I don't know. I, this this is I'm not going to do a Lions bit. They're going to be bad. I want them to be bad. I want them to get the number one pick. A lot of people are like, what if they go 0 and 17? I really don't care. Like, if, if it lands you the first pick, like if you if all the other teams have two wins, you can get one win as long as you get this number one pick. Because I think that this defensive end from Oregon yeah. is one of the yeah. best Thibodeau's prospects. Incredible. Thibodeau's insane, He's and incredible. I think that we absolutely need him on our team. So I'm fine with it. All right. That's my Lions gripe. You have anything you want to say about Detroit just, Lions? Just that, like, the, getting hung up on this 0-17 thing, I agree. It's, it's I, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal. Obviously, it's embarrassing. The Lions are an embarrassing franchise. We know this. But in terms of, like, the Jags could 100% lose out. This Jags Warriors team is terrible. Same they with the Texans. Win. They have one. Yeah, so get the Texans. Yeah, you're right. They are terrible, and they have one win. So if we get a win, and all of a sudden we have two teams sitting at 1-16, what good does it do us if we lose? Yeah, it's a coin. Ball? It's a coin flip. It's not like the lottery where you just need to be one of the worst three teams and you have the same chance at getting the number one pick. Like you can for sure lock in your destiny with getting the number one pick by losing games. Do I want Detroit to go 0-17 to get the number one pick? 
No, but if it happens to happen and it lands us the number one pick, I'm happy with it. If we're one in 16, what's the difference between one 16 and 0 and 17? A little bit of pride. Like this roster is already really bad. There's going to be a ton of turnover next year. So I'm not really that excited, that, that bad about it. I'm in the mindset. I don't know if it's just me being a basketball fan more than a football fan. It's of like, just let your young guys play, let them develop. They'll be back next year. Let Sewell get run. Don't run Swift too hard. You have Jamal Williams for a reason. You obviously know that golf isn't the answer. Find out who can work in your defense because this defense is shit. Just, you know what you know about the Lions seven games in. So just keep losing is all I have to say. What what pride are we holding on to as Lions fans? I mean, we're literally the most. Never been a winning franchise. The most miserable franchise in like all of professional sports. There's no pride that we're holding on to. Let's just do our best to rally around the idea that we can make this team better if we get good players. And I think Thibodeau is incredible. And I would love to have him in Detroit next year. Okay. Let's move on to our picks. All right. So we're going to do a favorite, an underdog, an over, and an under. Let's start with favorite. I have the Chargers against the Patriots. The Chargers are at home. I don't know why it's this close. I know the Patriots are a scrappy team. They just blew out the Jets, who are one of the worst teams in the NFL. But I do like the Chargers off the bye, minus four to cover that. Um, I just think the Chargers are legit, one of the best teams in football. They had a disappointing loss to the Ravens two weeks ago. So I think they'll be looking to revenge that. They can't afford to go four and three. They need to keep pace with the Raiders and keep the wins above the Chiefs and everything. So... I'm going to take the Chargers minus four. I think they win by a touchdown. Yeah, I I actually really like that pick. That was one of them that I had written down and I was thinking about it um, before. Uh, I agree. I'll be taking it. Um, The Chargers have to play hard every game. There is no – you're always going to play hard against the Patriots. Like, there's no games that this Chargers team can take off. They're playing in a really tough division, um, and they need everyone they can get. So I agree with that pick. Okay, your favorite. So mine, it's going to be, it's gross. It's, it's disgusting. I hate it. It's despicable, but I want the chiefs minus nine and a half against the giants. It can't get any lower is my thought is that this chiefs team is looks dead. They look bottomed out. And if there is any fight left in that locker room, if there's any hope left for that team, they should be able to with the roster that they have. I don't care how bad the defense is. They should be able to pummel the Giants. This Giants team hasn't been great. Daniel Jones has actually looked good. Um, he's been impressive. I think they should be able to pummel this Giants team. Um, I think to expect a big win. Honestly, I was not expecting the number to be nine and a half because I've been thinking about them all week. I was expecting the number to be more like minus like five and a half, maybe. Um, a little lower and not have to get to over a touchdown, but I don't care. I want it. I think this Chiefs team is incredibly talented. I don't think anybody doesn't think that. Um, and it's just been a tough season, and these tough seasons happen, but they're too talented to not go in and just destroy a bad Giants team. So, like I said, it's gross. I hate it, but I also love it. I hate it, too, which makes me also kind of like it. I'm a little nervous about it. We'll see how good my weekend is, is as far as gambling. It's a lot of points. The Giants did just have a really good game against the Panthers, who I think suck. Um, but yeah, I- I'm scared about it, but I don't hate it. I definitely don't hate it. All right. Moving on, uh, underdog. I'm going Titans money line. Somehow they're an underdog against the Colts. It makes zero sense. The Colts had a good win against the 49ers. They looked pretty decent. I think this is actually going to be a close game. I don't hate on that. I just don't understand the Titans being an underdog. The Titans have shown that they're one of the best teams in football. I think, uh, I think they beat the Colts. The Colts are going to have a letdown spot. They've won what two games in a row, maybe no one in a row. They lost a tough game on Monday night to the Ravens. They've won a game in a row. They've won one game. I think these teams are evenly matched pretty close, but I think the Titans probably win by like a, a field goal, field goal, four points. So I'll, I'll take Titans uh, money line underdog. Yeah. That game scares me for a number of reasons. Um, but I just think Titans are just the better team. Um, obviously, the Colts are home, so they're going to get a little extra pull on the spread. Um, but I, I like to pick. If I had to make a pick on the game, I would agree. I would take Titans. I would just do the money line and drop the point and a half. Um, but, yeah, I, I don't hate it. I just think it's a scary game, and it's it's gonna, definitely going to be close. It's definitely but, a Vegas game. Like, I don't know why the Titans are underdogs. Like, a 3-14 and 14 versus 5-2. and two, Like, what does Vegas know for this game that the Titans I mean, are the underdog? Because I think, I think they expect everyone to take the Titans. So I'm just curious about what they know. They know something. They always know something. And, you know, that's always terrifying. But I agree with your pick in principle. I think it's it makes sense. And uh, from what we've seen, it makes sense. Um, my underdog of the week will be uh, one of the 425 games on Sunday. Um, Washington football team is heading to Denver. And they are plus three. 
Um, there's a lot to not like about this Washington football team at times. I get it. Heineke's a nightmare when he gets in the red zone. Um, he, 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 I, I got nothing but love for uh, Heineke, <laughs> Heineke, but he has been a mess at times. And um, I understand the, the concern there. But this Denver team, I don't think is good. I think they're, I do not think they're very good. And I think that three points is too low of a number. I think there should be more pick em ish. Maybe I could even see the football team being favored. Regardless, um, I really like the football team here. I think the defense absolutely clamps this uh, below average Denver offense. And uh, Heineke doesn't, isn't going to need to do too terribly much to plot a win here. I can see a very low scoring game here as well. Yeah, Denver's bad. I've been trying to talk myself into whether I want to start Cortland Sutton against the Washington defense, who sucks or start Robert Woods against the Texans defense who sucks. Who's been also underwhelming this season. So been having my own quorum battle and then admins, that's a fantasy thing. Who cares? But uh, I agree. I think that the Washington football team could easily win this game. I could also see them easily losing this game. So it's just tough. It's just a gut feeling is if you think that the uh, football team is better than uh, the Broncos and the Broncos look like garbage on Thursday night last week. They've had 10 whole days though, to prepare for this game. So uh, I'm scared mm-hmm. about that one, but I do like it. I do like it. All right. Moving on to my um Underplay of the week. I think this is my lock. If I had to pick an NFL lock of my picks, it'd be this one. The Panthers and the Falcons under 46. I think the Panthers suck. I think the Falcons are a pretty good team. I could easily seeing the Falcons win this game like 30 to 7, maybe 23 to 10, somewhere around that range. I like the Falcons. I love my boy Kyle Pitts. Uh, I think the Panthers were the fakest team in the NFL, them and the Broncos right next to each other. So Mm -hmm. I'm going to go Falcons and Panthers under 46. And if I had to pick my lock for the NFL this week, it'd be this one. Nice. My lock, my, actually my favorite pick I found uh, was also an under Uh, Miami uh, at Buffalo. The over under is set at 49 and a half. And I will be taking that under because I do not think this Miami team can score. I know Tua looked all right um, last week against a pretty, pretty below average um, Falcons defense, but I don't think this, Miami offense can even pretend to hang with Buffalo. This is a game like, just like you said, I could see a, a 30 to seven, uh, 32 to 10 win, um, something like that. Uh, and I'm not at all scared of the number. I think it's too high. Uh, I, I fully expect an under here. I like this bill's defense and I think Miami is really bad, which what a turn of events they've been going through like the past, like four years. What a yeah. weird franchise to be a fan of. Cause you For go being- absolutely, Absolutely abysmal to what they had a 10 and six season somewhere in there. And then yeah, last year, last like year, sneaky and, good last year. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, like you have a ton of people thinking like this team could really do it. Like they're building, building, building. And then it just, everything falls apart. It's like my biggest fear for the lions is that if we had this rebuilding process that kind of went on for a few years and you finally have a good season where you feel like we can build off this. Well, it's the Jim Caldwell year when they fired Jim Caldwell after making the playoffs and they were a decent team. They're like, we're looking to take the next step. And they brought in a rookie head coach in Patricia and he set us back four years. So they never should have fired Jim Caldwell. It's the exact same thing. And now the Dolphins are thinking about trading for a guy who has like 23 sexual assault allegations against him. Yeah. What a a mess. Like how, how annoying must that be to a locker room? Like they talk about like, what trade rumors and NBA locker rooms do. I feel like it's more prolific in an NFL locker room when there's serious trade negotiations to like repra- replace your starting quarterback. Um, I, I just think this Dolphins team's a mess. They've gotten the legs cut out from under them. And uh, I don't think they can they'll score many points here. I also don't hate that fact. The Buffalo's got a, or is minus 13 and a half. I could totally be talked into that this week as a pick as well. Yeah, I I think that's definitely a pick that I might go with, too. Like, I I definitely think Buffalo could just curb stomp them. Didn't Buffalo just lose, too, or didn't they lose? They're on off of a bye week, right? Yes. Yeah, their last game was that loss to the Titans, correct? Yes. Yeah, which was what a mess of a game that was, but. Okay, Um, on to my over. Speaking of the Detroit Lions, it will be the Lions and the Eagles over um, 48. Uh, the Eagles like to put up fourth quarter points. The Lions like to put up fourth quarter points. Do you both defenses kind of suck? And, um, yeah, I could see this easily going for over 48. I could see this easily going under 48. The Lions defense has been pretty 
bad. They let up a lot of points against the Rams. Um, the Eagles defense has been really bad as well. Two bad defenses, two subpar offenses. I think that leads to close to enough points. So I'm going to go over Lions and Eagles 48 points. I like it. Um, mine for the week, I'm actually heading back to your Patriots Chargers game, and I will be taking over 49 in that game. Um, this Chargers defense, uh, like I, I'm a fan of the Chargers. I actually really like this Chargers team. Um, but their defense hasn't been great ever since that Browns game. It's been kind of a downhill slide for this defense, and they've struggled at times. Um, and I just don't think 49 is enough. Uh, I, I, I like the Chargers to win and cover, but I think it'll be a high-scoring affair. Um, Max just – I know it's the Jets, but Max coming off a really good week. Um, and, yeah, I just think the number's a little too low. I don't mind 49. I'll take the over there. I think there's good value. I like that value, too. You said it was over 49? 49 even, yes, sir. Okay. Pats chargers over 49. Okay. And before we get into our uh, Michigan, Michigan state breakdown for the big game this weekend, let's just do a lock real quick. Uh, Nate, Oh, and four on your lock. Nate, mm-hmm. tell me what your college football lock is. I promise I'll take the opposite. <laughs> I would do not that this week. This one's going to hit. I believe in it fully. Uh, we have Ole Miss heading to Auburn. They are currently plus. That's, three. This is mine. Wait, is it really? Yeah, I, I oh, Ole, no. Miss, Ole Miss money line. I For think it's fuck. so free. I think I it's think free. It what does Vegas know here? Matt Coral has been incredible this season. Like, absolutely incredible. Yeah. I did not realize he's also the leading rusher by like 70 yards over there mm-hmm. starting running back. And he's been incredible as a passer, I think 15 to one touchdown interception. He's been awesome. Um, and Bo Nix has been good too. Bo Nix has been very good as far as college quarterbacks go. But I think Matt Coral just – takes the top off this often, uh, Auburn team. Uh, I think Ole Miss should oh, not be underdogs no. here. I think they should be favored by a point and a half to two. I think there's great value here, and I am so sorry to hurt you like this. I, it's my lock, too. Damn. I know. That's brutal. My lock of the week is actually Auburn minus the – I mean, now I'm taking Ole Miss <laughs> – I'm taking Ole Miss money line. I really like it. I think this Ole Miss team is legit. I could see how they lose the fuck. They're gonna lose to Auburn. God damn it! But I'm gonna I'm take old. I'm gonna take Ole Miss. I might. I might not feel as good about the money line anymore. I might take the three points now. Not nah, fuck it. I'm taking money line. Fuck it. Money line. I mean, dogs. I'm money line too. I love it. Okay, so we're just gonna ride with the Rebels. Look, it, look. I know. I'm. No, I know. I'm zero four, but I really feel like this is a good pick. I mean, it, it's it, a bad pick. You know what I mean? Yeah, I agree. Like, it, you can only be wrong so many times in a row. That's actually very fair. You know, there's this coin on the Pat McAfee show that's perfectly picked 29 games in a row. Wait, what? Yeah, there's a coin where they do, like, two teams that are close to, like, being the, like, close to favorites. Like, either, like, minus 110 or, like, minus to 130, like, two teams, and they flip a coin to pick who's going to win the game. It's been 29 and 0, and it's 29 first picks. It's well, insane. We, we have to bet against it then, right? You can't oh, yeah, for sure. You can't go 30 and 0. <laughs> for sure. I followed the account, and I'm going to fade that's the not, fuck out of this incredible. coin. <laughs> I haven't done it yet, but he gave a hockey pick yesterday. The coin gave the hockey pick yesterday, and it hit. This coin knows. That's incredible. All right. Is it time? I think it's time. I'm so ready. The Michigan State Spartans play f- underdog at home to the University of Michigan on Saturday, noon kickoff. First of all, I want to all three of the big, all, all three of the big Sunday sh- or Saturday shows, College Game Day, Fox oh. Big Noon Kickoff, and Barstool will all be there. Shout out to Barstool. They did an awesome job listening to people tell them they had a shit location. They changed yeah. it to Cedar Village now. Awesome get. How did they not pick that from the beginning? I have no idea. What I want to um, know if is- that was offered to them as their first selection, that's probably the best place to do it. You'll get a shit ton of students doing it in CV. Yeah, I was going to say, how did they end up picking the other, like the Clipper location first? Like who told them that was a better idea? I, yeah. So it had to be like a rep from Barcelona MSU. Regardless, they are now in an incredible position and that show is going to be off. Like it's going to go crazy. It's going to be incredible. Yeah, I agree. Um, there'll probably be a lot of Michigan slappies at that one for Dave. I wish I could attend these shows, but the current plans for the boys and everybody going out is a 6.30 wait in line to go to the Riv because it, the bar opens at 9 o'clock, but you're going to have to line up close to 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning, going to CVS, buying a pack of White Claws and sitting outside 
of uh, the Riv is the plan Saturday morning, freezing my ass off. But Michigan State Spartans, I'm hammering their money line. I told myself that I'm easily doing 100 on MSU money line, maybe more depending on how fucking frisky I feel. <laughs> I, I don't care about the point spread. I don't care about any of this shit. I only care about wins for Michigan State. I don't care about the spread, especially in a game against Michigan. I have been in a mood all week where I want to tear Michigan's hands fucking head off. I am. I would pad up for the boys this weekend and let them destroy me, whatever it takes to get this win. I'm so amped. I love Michigan State this weekend. I feel really good that Cade McNamara is the starting quarterback. I think that you could see the switch to J.J. McCarthy this game easily. I think McNamara sucks. I think State has a good enough run defense to stop their run between Haskins and Corum or at least contain it, not stop it. Um, they're going to have to pass the ball in Cade McNamara fucking sucks. If they switch to JJ McCarthy, I'd be a little bit more worried, but I don't think Jim would do it right before this big of a game. He's going to at least try with McNamara who looked awful. I obviously McCarthy looks better than him, which I think all Michigan fans can agree with. I'd be terrified if it's McCarthy, but with McNamara, I feel pretty good about it. I think Peyton Thorne's better. I think we have better receivers. I think our offensive line is just as good as theirs. The only thing that they're better at us then is maybe they have a couple more like skill guys on defense that really stick out. Mm-hmm. Our defense is more front seven loaded and Xavier Henderson in the back. I just feel great about Michigan State today. I'm ready to run through a brick wall. Saturday can't come soon enough. I've been doing coke every day preparing. <laughs> Man, I miss this feeling. This this feeling this week is incredible. It's been really, it's been carrying my week. Just this pent up excitement that I have. I haven't felt it about football in so long. It feels incredible. Um, it's it's awesome. The game's gonna be amazing. Um, I I have my suicide contingency planned in the event that everything goes south, which I think is a necessary but hopefully not needed precaution. Um, that being said. But just to talk about it for a moment, you covered just about everything I wanted to say. I agree with just about all you said. The only notch on my dad is that um, it's, it's diff- it can be difficult to tell which offensive line has been better at times just because this Michigan team has run the ball so damn much. You know what I mean? So, like, the, the numbers, I think, look a be- little bit better for U of M, but I don't know that there's necessarily a talent um, advantage on either end. Um, Michigan State's offensive line is definitely deeper. We run nine guys oh, deep. Absolutely. Michigan runs They're, around yeah, seven. The rotation, the rotation um, that we have is incredible. Their and- ta- they also lack really badly at their tackles. Their interior linemen, they have a, a bunch they can sub in and out, but they they roll with two tackles. They don't change for the entire game. They change the middle three guys occasionally, but um, their outside guys, they stay exactly the same. So no, I just feel that's better certainly, about it. That's certainly an advantage. Um, the other thing that I just can't figure out is that why is Michigan minus four? Yeah, I thought it'd be pretty close to a pick up, maybe minus one. It doesn't make sense to me. I'm taking the money line, so I'll take all of the num. I'll take all – it's plus 165 right now. Hell, they can send it to plus 200 for all they want. They can send it to plus 5,000. Yeah, exactly. Mm. But this is just – like, I just don't understand it because usually what do you see, a two-and-a-half-point swing home versus away? Yeah, I'd say two-and-a-half two and to three. So you're telling me that if this game was at Michigan, they'd be a touchdown favorite? That's, that's It just doesn't joke. make any sense to me. I don't think uh, – I agree. I think every uh, U of M fan that I've talked to, um, even the ones that are a little scared about the potential inconsistencies that could come from J.J. McCarthy, they're over this – Cade McNamara thing um, that they they don't love it they don't love the quarterback and I understand it he looks bad at times he misses throws I um, was in uh, U of M or in Ann Arbor last weekend went to the big house to watch him play Northwestern and he missed some throws against some pretty weak coverage that's like that's noticeable against the Northwestern team how noticeable is that going to be against you know MSU undefeated um I, I love I love the money line. I'm so excited. I've been this pumped for a sporting event in a very long time. I'm ready to bring it. 6:30 cannot come soon enough on a Saturday morning. I know right now I'm planning to get like a four or five hour nap before the game, but there's a real chance Friday night I can't sleep. There's a real fucking chance. Isn't that it's incredible what what these what sports do to us? Because and I'm going to be pounding already, the red vodka Red Bulls to start the. I've, I've already planned out um, fully that I don't intend to sleep. Friday. You know, like when head coaches script their first five plays. I've yeah. scripted my first five drinks for Saturday morning. It's going to start with a nice white claw on the walk there, the pack of white claw waiting in line, 
vodka Red Bull, the first drink in there, and then vodka sodas the rest of the day, maybe a vodka so vodka Red Bull at halftime. I'm I'm easily prepared to drop a significant amount of money paying for drinks at the bar. Yeah, I'm I've, ready. I've, I've been I've been budgeting for like the past two weeks to plan money for this. I mean, there's just so much about this game that's been anticipated. It's going to be incredible. Um, I, I can't wait to feel the energy in East Lansing. I feel like the last time it's even going to be, I feel like the last time that it, it's even gotten close to what we're going to feel like on Saturday was that final four game um, uh, against Duke or the elite eight game to go to the final four against Duke. The energy is just going to be incredible. Streets are going to be packed. Um, yeah. I can't wait. Is my audio off? You it was for a moment there. Oh, okay. Whatever. You might just have um, to cut around. Oh, it's fine. Um, leaving this all in. Fuck it. <laughs> we love it. Um, yeah, I, I think this is going to be the busiest the campus has ever been. I said 730 because you're going to have to get up that early to get a spot at a bar you actually want to watch. I don't want to watch it at Rick's. I don't want to watch it in the goddamn living room. I want to be at the Riv, which is the best place to watch a game, that or Fieldhouse. One of those two places are the best two places to watch a game. I want to be there. I want to be taking their $1 specialty shots on Saturdays for game days. I want to be wearing my Michigan State jersey. I want my $1 piece of pizza, I think, or $1 tacos on Saturday. I want it all. I want the fucking smoke. I will be doing vodka shots. I want it all. I want Michigan fans in my face. I don't fucking care. I want this smoke. I want everybody in my replies if State loses this game, which they might easily do. But if they if they don't, I'm going to be hanging my dick so long down to my leg. It will be a third fucking leg. You will see me tripoding around East Lansing with my dick hanging out of the bottom of my pants. And any Michigan fan I see will get immediately hazed, no physical altercation. They will get emotionally and verbally abused by me. And that's what that's the appropriate feeling that we should have that I do have. I'm so excited. I'm a new East Lansing in like about a month and a half or maybe over that. I, I can't wait to be back home. I've been looking forward to it for two weeks now. It's going to all come together. I'm going to be an emotional wreck. That's to be expected. Regardless, this game of, is going regardless to... of the way the game's going, I'm going to be – I mean, I know I'm losing my voice. I know I'm going to be a nightmare. I know I'm going to be swinging my arms like I want to clear out the room. I'm fully expecting all of that. And there are plans to go out Saturday night in Halloween costumes. And if this game doesn't go well, that's going to be a very sad going out. I might still make it out, but – I will be very, very sad. My spirit will won't be there. But if they win, I will party until Project X quotes to the break of dawn, yo, to the break yeah. of dawn. Absolutely. Nate, any final thoughts, Michigan, Michigan State, before we wrap this episode and we head into our weekend? I, I, I think we have covered everything that needs to be covered. I think we've said everything that needs to be said. I just want to see the boys go out there. I want to see them do it. I want to see a great game, and I fully expect – an MSU dub. I cannot wait. It's going to be incredible. It's going to be incredible. Thank you again, Blake, for coming on the podcast. Michigan, you fucking Shut cowards. Up. You Shut coward up, pieces of shit. Um, didn't want to go to my podcast. I'm looking at you, Aiden Hutchinson. Didn't reply to my DM. I get you're busy. I get you're one of the best players in the country, but still. All right. <laughs> Follow us on Instagram, Moving Forward Pod, FWD Pod, Twitter, Moving Forward Pod, FWD Pod, TikTok, The Moving Forward Pod, YouTube, Loth 11, where you can get this first. Nate, thank you for joining me. I'm so amped for this Saturday. Let's end it off with a good old go green. Go white, baby. Let's get it. Thanks for having me, Jake. The world ain't all sunshine and rainbows. As there's a drive in a deep left field by Castellanos, it will be a home run. But it ain't about how hard you hit. And I hit out the park, no question, with all due respect. It's about how hard you can get hit. And you might need, at some point in your life, a little massage on your ass. They keep moving forward. How much you can take, they keep moving forward. Forward.